Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Ask the Lawyers. My name is Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. Today, we're going to talk about a health issue that many U.S. Uh, military personnel are facing that might have been able to be avoided. And it, uh, it involves uh, allegedly defective earplugs that might have led to long-term hearing problems for our men and women uh, of the military. And our expert today is attorney Mike Idson of the law firm Colson Hicks Idson. And he's here to give us the facts of the case as we know them right now uh, and uh, walk us through the process a little bit. Mike, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for asking me to be here today. Let's start with some of the background. What are the allegations against 3M uh, about these earplugs? Well, the allegations are fairly simple in this case. They made a, a defective earplug and supplied that as uh, equipment to the military between 2000 and 2016. Um, actually, the, the uh, earplugs were standard issue, and they were manufactured by another company called Aero, which was acquired by 3M in 2008. So 3M, however, is a large corporation, and they would be responsible for the defective condition and any injuries caused by that to all these servicemen to whom these were given during that time period. And, and the allegation is that they knew the earplugs were defective? Yes, the allegation is that they knew that these were unsatisfactory, that they would become loosened in a combat situation and not protect the eardrums. And what sort of uh, injuries are we seeing that are, are, have been allegedly caused by the defective ear, ear, uh, earplugs? Well, we're seeing severe ear injuries, uh, hearing loss, uh, and a t t tinnitus, which is a ringing in the ear, which can interfere, also interfere with hearing. Now, I know this is just a guess at this point, but we're talking 16 years or so. How, how many people do you think use the earplugs or, or how many people would you guess uh, have had hearing issues because of those? Uh, we're not sure about how many people have the hearing loss itself. We've, we're talking about more than two million of these that were uh, issued and used by these men in combat, such men and women in combat situations. So needless to say, it's a large number. It's a very large number. Uh, now, recently, the federal government reached a settlement with 3M. What can you tell us about that? Uh, by the way, these are called combat arms earplugs. Okay. And the United States government uh, settled the case with, uh, with 3M in July of 2018. They brought a lawsuit. They brought a, an action against 3M alleging that these were defective. And that case was settled for $9.1 million to be paid out over a number of years. Now, to me, a layman, that seems like a pretty small number of been, uh, for a major corporation of that many people involved. Does that seem that way to you, too? Yes, it, it seems like a very small number, but it did not provide any compensation for the individuals. They're able to bring those claims themselves. And that's, why the number, that's why the number is so small. Uh, I got you. Now, is that a was that settlement? Is that uh, are we able to find out what was involved in the settlement? Is, is there any of that evidence be able to be used in these cases? Yes, we can use the evidence from that case. It's a matter of public record. And so what happens now? Uh, U.S. military personnel who, who served during those years may have used those earplugs. They need to contact an attorney. Yeah, any, anybody who feels like that they've suffered these injuries can contact an attorney who is an expert in handling these cases and receive compensation for whatever loss that they might have. Uh, that would vary from person to person. Um, our law firm is able to take the medical records for these individuals and determine whether or not we believe that they suffered injury as a result of uh, exposure to loud noises because these product, this product didn't work. And uh, then we can provide a claim against 3M for those people for their compensation based on our experience and handling cases like this in the past. Well, that was going to be another question I had for you. Give, tell us a little bit about your firm has had a lot of experience with these multi-district type of litigations. Give us a little bit, toot your own horn a little bit. Yeah, the case can be brought wherever the individual happens to live. And there are two different types of court systems in our country. There's the state court system and there's the federal system. And they can be brought in either one of these if the amount in controversy is large enough. Um, we usually file the cases in state court. In most states, those are faster, and it's easier to handle a case like that. Um, you can also file the case in federal court. In federal court, what happens is, um, in a case like this, which is called a mass tort case, mass meaning there's a lot of 
people who are in the same situation. They have the same liability situation. Liability means it determines whether or not the defendant is responsible for their injury, and they have, but they have different law situation. Each claim stands on its own merits based on the facts in that particular case. So each one of those, uh, each one of these cases, each person has a has a uh, claim for damages that can be brought in state or federal court. Um, if it's brought in federal court, the cases are consolidated uh, in what we call a multi-district litigation. And that means that all the cases are sent to one judge. Let's say we file the case in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. The person we represent lives in Austin, Texas. We file the case in Austin, Texas in federal court or it's transferred to federal court by the defendant. And that all those cases then uh, in a couple of months are going to be transferred to one judge. In this case, it can be in a place like St. Paul, Minnesota, where this defendant is located. They have their headquarters there. Or, or the panel, which hears this, there's nine federal judges called the multi-district litigation panel. They'll decide where the cases go that are in federal court. Those cases are then consolidated in front of one judge. That judge will then run that case until he finishes, he or she finishes the liability part of the case. And then they can send those cases back to the place where they were filed for trial. Any of those cases can settle at any time during that process, whether it's in state court or federal court. And general, generally in a mass tort situation like this, as the liability goes through the stages, a lot of these cases will get settled. Uh, at the time that we're pursuing the liability part of the case, we'll also be developing all the evidence in the damages part of the case, and we'll make a demand on the defendant for compensation for each one of the people we represent. So we could represent a thousand people, for example. We have the people here that can uh, organize the records for each one of those people individually, decide what we think their case is worth, call those people, discuss what we think with them, get their input, and then decide jointly between us what a proper demand would be, and then make that demand on the defendant. Right. And that is the same way this is handled, whether it's in state court or federal court. So the next step for somebody, if they, if they think they might have uh, suffered damage, or they know they have, or maybe they're not sure, is to contact, uh, contact your firm and see, uh, start the process. Yeah, they should contact us and start the process. They should contact us. Uh, we'll, we'll have information on the internet where they can contact our firm. They can fill out a form or they can email us right. and we'll, they'll have to provide us with certain uh, information that we'll request from them that we need in order to evaluate their claim to see whether they have a claim. And then we'll proceed to handle the case from there. We do these on a contingency fee basis it will not cost any money to get their case evaluated and we'll advance all the costs to handle their cases uh, and we'll be paid we'll be paid a fee and we'll get our cost back if we're successful in recovering money for the people that we represent somebody that contacts you to and thinks they might have a case do they need to be prepared to travel to your firm or is, can this be done over the phone the internet that sort of thing this, this can all be done on the telephone. It can be on, we usually will get information on the internet first. If we think that the case is, um, has merit, we'll contact the people by telephone. We'll send them a contract. They sign the contract, they hire a firm. As I said, it would be based on a contingency fee, mm -hmm. which means we only get paid if we recover. If we're not successful, we don't receive anything for our time. Or, our, or the cost we spend. If we're not successful, they don't pay us anything. So that's the way we handle these cases. What about military personnel who, who served during that time uh, maybe and maybe suffered the injuries but may have passed on? Do, do their family members, their survivors have any recourse? In most states, they will have a claim for the damages that that person suffered before they passed away. So they should contact you as well then? Yeah, they should contact us as well. And I think, based on what I know so far, the only people who will be plaintiffs in this case will either be the actual soldiers or their families if they've passed away. Uh, the people that we that were supplied these earplugs were people that were in the military. Right. 
And uh, is there a sense of urgency here, Mike? Do, do, you, do you encourage people to act sooner rather than later? Yeah, I think they ought to go ahead and pursue it as soon as possible. I don't see any reason to delay it. And, and if they feel like that they've got a serious hearing problem, that can lead to depression and other medical problems. So I think it's important that they get our information. We can supply them with some information about their injury and about the consequences of the injury that might be helpful to them and being treated for other things that are associated with this. And, and you and your firm, Colson Hicks Hidson, you have been successful in handling similar kind of uh, cases like this in the past, correct? We've handled cases like this all over the country for dozens, involving dozens of products. Anything from tires to pharmaceuticals to things like this, the data breach cases, just about anything that involves um, a claim that affects a lot of people in a similar way. So I'd imagine it's important to contact somebody that has experience in these sort of things and, and has success in, in these things in the past. Yeah, you don't, I don't think you want to go down and just hire anybody. You want to hire somebody that knows what they're doing and how to handle cases like this. Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate your help. I appreciate you clarifying a lot of this for us, and I appreciate your time today. Well, thank you very much for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest has been attorney Mike Hidson with the law firm Colson Hicks Hidson. If you think you may qualify for damages in this case, you want more information, you can get in touch with Mike directly by calling the phone number that is on the screen right now. If you have other questions or need more information, of course, you can always visit askthelawyers.com. And I ask that you take a sec to subscribe to our YouTube channel, too, so you don't miss any future episodes of Ask the Lawyers. Uh, I'm Rob Rosenthal for AskTheLawyers.com. <laughs>